by Lucky Strike. Light up the lucky. It's light up time. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the treat that you like, light up the lucky strike. We like. It's light up time. Why is it when folks are stepping out, you so often see luckies going along? It's just that luckies always taste better. That's because they're made of fine tobacco. Naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco that's toasted. That's right. It's toasted to taste even better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Next time you're going out, take a pack of Luckies along with you. You'll say they're the best-tasting cigarettes you ever smoked. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light up time. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Lucky Strike program. And I want to wish all of you a very happy new year. I hope you all had a nice Christmas. I know I had one of the best this year. And I got such beautiful gifts. And they were all so practical, too. Oh, I got it from my cast and my director. And Oh, I must tell you, first of all, what the orchestra boys gave me. You see, they always wait the last minute to buy me a gift. And this year, they tried to get it on Christmas Eve, you see, and the only thing open was a delicatessen. <laughs> so the next morning when I came downstairs, there hanging on the mantel was a stocking full of coleslaw. <laughs> you know, if they'd have just given it to me a few days sooner, I wouldn't have had to spend all that money on tinsel. <laughs> But I got a lot of nice practical gifts. Now, Don Wilson gave me this tie, you know, conservative. Don, uh, Mary gave me the shirt. And Dennis Day gave me these socks. <laughs> I don't want you to think that these aren't mates. It's just that when I washed them, one shrunk. <laughs> I think we got him at the Pep Boys or someplace. <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, Christmas is over. Now we're Jack, looking forward to New Jack, Year. Jack, oh, excuse Don. Me, excuse yes, me, please, Don. Jack, one of the ushers found this lady's handbag here at the studio, and I thought you might like to announce it so the owner could claim it. Oh, oh, well, thank you, Don. I certainly will before anything happens to it. No money in it, right? <laughs> it says Miss Mansfield. If there's a Miss Mansfield in the audience, would she please come up on the stage and claim her purse? A Miss Mansfield. Oh, for heaven's sake! I never dreamed that was you. I, I, I want to tell you that I'm, I'm quite flattered that you, you came here uh, to, you know, to see my show. You know? Frankly, Jack, I really didn't expect to be here myself. You didn't? No, what happened was I was just walking outside, you know, passing the studio, and an usher ran out and grabbed my purse. <laughs> An usher grabbed your purse? He certainly did, and I think it's a pretty sneaky way for you to get guests up here on the stage. <laughs> well, I mean, what's the difference? You're here, and that's all that matters. Uh, Jack, I'd like to ask you a question. Is this the way you always get your guest stars? Well, uh... No, sometimes it doesn't work. I remember once... <laughs> once I tried the same purse trick with Martha Ray, but she's got a grip like a bulldog. Did you get her purse? Pardon? Did you get Martha's purse? No, and we lost an usher. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jack, 
Mr. Zoffy nice of you to return my purse to me, and I guess I'll be Thank leaving you. now. Oh, wait a minute, Jay, wait a minute, before you leave. I must tell you that the other night I went to see your new picture, the, uh, the girl can't help it. That's the, right. The, and I thought not only the picture was good, but you were absolutely wonderful. Well, thank you very much. How did you like my leading man, Tom Ewell? Tom Ewell? Well, I thought he was good, you know. I, <laughs> although I felt that the part called for someone, say, a little more mature, a little <laughs> more sophisticated. <laughs> you know, a little more, more, well, well, you know what I mean. I not only know what you mean, I know whom. <laughs> I thought I was being so subtle. <laughs> but Jane, I must tell you something. You know, I know the gentleman who directed your picture, Frank Tashlin, oh, very well. We've yes. been friends for years. And I thought maybe I could have been in the picture, you see. So I called him mm -hmm. and asked him about it. And I didn't get anywhere. Wasn't there a part in the picture for me? Oh, yes, there was, but he decided to give it to me. <laughs> No. <laughs> he said that even though we walked alike, that you were too sophisticated. <laughs> well, I wasn't too sophisticated for them to ask me to put money in the picture, you know. Oh, and now, Jack, you didn't finance this picture. I happen to know they got all the money from the bank. Well, where do you think the bank got it? <laughs> Well, Jane, anyway, thanks again. It was lovely having you up here, and I wanted everybody to see Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to announce, if you will please look at me. <laughs> Miss Mansfield is going to be a guest on my program a week from Thursday on the Shower of Stars. And uh, this, is, this is a scheduled appearance. This isn't one of those purse-grabbing things. <laughs> and now, in keeping with the new year, the Sportsman Quartet and Rochester are going to do a uh, typical New Year's number called New Year's in Trinidad. <laughs> If you're feeling kind of low and want to get away, pick a Caribbean island for your holiday. Spend New Year's Day in Trinidad. Do your friends with you for you with the dialogue? Are you fed up with the traffic with the fog and smart? Would you like to never see another eggnog? Spend New Year's Day in Trinidad. So come, come, come and meet the Saga man who sing, sing, sing the only way he can. Come, come, come. You learn Calypso if you're able to Put the accent upon the wrong syllable You must come soon, it's unbelievable On New Year's Day in Like, 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 like
Let's call it a lucky try. We know considerable tastiness. Result from lucky special toasting process. Ella, 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 is the cigarette for you and me. Now today, start the new year right. Sing a little song with all your might. But before we do another thing, oh, Lang Syne, we ought to sing. Sure, oh, I'm going to see for a guest. And if I want to mind, to mind, sure, oh, I'm going to see for a guest. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, now that we are approaching the new year, 1947, I do think... <laughs> what did I say? 40? Oh, 19, I, 1957. Now we're approaching 1957. I, I, I often... No wonder I'm 39. I'm, <laughs> I keep wondering, where is the new talent coming from that television needs so badly? And I think it is up to fellows like myself and other entertainers in this business to give amateurs and talent a chance new ta to be seen on the stage, you see. And I'm going to do this once in a while, have these amateur shows starting with tonight. And I've asked my producer to sort of search around through this area for some local talent, and uh, he has some for today, and I haven't seen any of the acts, but he tells me they're awfully good, you know. And of course, it'll be up to your approval who wins the contest and get a contract with me. So they, I believe they're here. Don, well, is, the, uh, is the talent yes, here? Yes, Jack, yes. <laughs> this gentleman is our first contestant, Jack. <laughs> See, it says, uh... Stanley G R O P F F Grop Stanley Grop <laughs> Stanley Grop <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. It always happens when I'm introduced. <laughs> uh, at a convention, my suit shrinks. <laughs> Well, Stanley, you know, of course, if you win this contest, you have a chance to go on television. I imagine you'd like that, would you? Oh, yes, sir. I would love to be on the TV. Good, good. Now, tell me, Mr. Grop, do the... Do you want to just call me Stanley? Now, Stanley, it says here that you do imitations. Is that right? Oh, yeah, that's right. I do animals, all kinds of things. You do? Oh, yeah. Well, let's, uh, let's hear a dog for the... Let's hear a dog. There's 18,000 kind of dogs, and he says, let's hear a dog. <laughs> Be specific. What kind of dog do you want? There's Charles, Chihuahuas, Dash Hunts, Doberman Pinchers, Cocker Spaniels. Well, all right, let's... There you do a Cocker Spaniel. I can't do that one. <laughs> Well, what kind of a dog? Well, do do? I, I do small dogs. <laughs> big dogs. <laughs> Happy dogs. <laughs> Sad dogs. <laughs> and I also do a St. Bernard. Oh, I'd like to hear that. Uh, a St. Bernard. Yeah. Let's hear that. <laughs> When you imitate a dog, you really get carried away, don't you? <laughs> Yesterday, I chased my wife up a tree. <laughs> well, what do you do, uh, Mr. Grop? Well, what do you do besides... Uh... No, I I'm sorry. <laughs> Besides, dog. <laughs> well, I, I can do a horse. Well, you might hate a horse? Or yeah. Let's hear that. 
Very good. Very good. Oh, thank you. Uh, I can also do an English horse. An English horse? Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear that. I don't All right. In English. Amazing. I mean, what do you do besides animals? I mean, oh, I got a, a extensive repertory. Oh, sure. Uh, did you ever hear an electric organ? No. Oh, well, you just listen to this. Uh, Stanley, Stanley, that's enough. Stanley, Stanley, that's enough. Stanley, Mr. Grop. Very, very good. I'll stand backstage, and in case you win the contest, you, we'll know the results afterwards. Yes, sir. Thank you very, very much. You just asked. Oh, wait a minute. Just one minute. As long as you've had so much trouble with that name Grop, uh, why didn't you change it? Oh, I already did. You did? Yes. My name used to be Spritzer. <laughs> Good luck, yeah. I changed my question. Oh, never mind. There's a great talent, ladies and gentlemen. Remember that name, Stanley Grop. Excuse me. Now, who have we next on this amateur contest? It says here, three, a sister act, three young ladies. I haven't seen this one either. He tells me they're awfully good. Would you please send those three ladies on, please, the sister act? a nice looking quartet. Are you the, uh... You are, I see. Now, what's the name of your act? What do you girls call yourselves, huh? Well, we're the three Landrew sisters. The Landrew sisters? Wait a minute, doesn't that sound very much like the famous Andrew sisters? We know what we're doing. <laughs> and let's see, you, you on the end over there, you, you are on the end. <laughs> You look a little like Don Wilson around the ribbon. <laughs> have you been with this trio a long time, have you? Yes, sir. Yeah, I mean, there's no bluff about this act. I mean, you girls are really sisters, huh? I am. I don't know about the other two. <laughs> well, I wouldn't expect you to remember everything, of course. <laughs> Which one is the oldest here? You mean excluding you? Yes, yes. <laughs> Well, we don't like to tell our age. Oh. That's the one thing I'm sensitive about. <laughs> well, girls, I... Well, here's a cute little number right... right here. How do you do? How do you do? You know, you're the, uh... You're the prettiest one of the three. Is that good? <laughs> Well, no, but it'll keep you from throwing yourself in front of a truck. I know what you mean. There used to be four of us. Well, then I'm right. I'm right. Now, girls, you know, of course, if you, um, if you get a contract, you know, if you happen to win in this contest, you can be on my show, and then you can travel with us and everything. You know, I'll be on the road all the time, going from town to town. You can travel with me all the time, you see. So, uh, I was wondering, have you had much experience? We ought to slap your face. <laughs> I didn't mean that. I mean singing on the stage here or something. For your information, 
Next Tuesday, we're going to be in the Rose Parade. Oh, are you going to be on, on the Hollywood float? On it. We're pulling it. <laughs> well, don't worry. Maybe next time you'll be riding on it, you know. That's what they keep telling us. Next year, next year. Gee. No. When are we going to sing? My feet are killing me. I thought you were sitting down. <laughs> Well, what number have you girlies prepared for us? What number are you going to do? Did you ever see a dream walking? Did you ever see? That's a pretty old song, isn't it? Well, we ain't exactly on pablum. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't no Huckleberry Finn yourself. All right. <laughs> have your number. That's what I want to hear. Malin, will you give them an introduction to their number? Feet don't hurt now. Do you? you get over here now. No, no, you get here. No, no, you better stay here. <laughs> Man, give him the, uh, the finish of the number. Sister, I wonder how they would have sound accompanied by Mr. Groff's electric organ. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after a word from my sponsor, I will be back with a contestant that I picked myself. <laughs> Presenting Happy Joe Lucky! <laughs> Lucky strike, lucky strike, 
better tasting Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. It's toasted for the taste you like. Every day more people say the Lucky Strike tastes better. So hurry on down to the shop you like and buy a heart of Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike, there's nothing quite like Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike, it's toasted for the taste you like. You will find that Lucky Strike cleaner, fresher, smoother. So if it's better taste you like, better taste the Lucky Strike. you like and buy a carton of Lucky Strike. You'll say it's the best tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Lucky Strike. Now, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, this next contestant, as I said before, I picked myself. I met him during one of my trips to the South Pacific. He was in the Philippines. And he's one of the greatest artists in the art of jiu-jitsu or judo or wrestling that you have ever seen in your life. As a matter of fact, he just recently <coughs> defeated the champion of Japan. I found out he was going to be here. I asked him to be on the show. I'd like to have you meet Mr. Leon Salvador. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, it makes no difference whether one, two, seven, or eight men should wrestle with him. Mr. Salvador can throw these seven or eight men within a period of not over 12 seconds. And I took the liberty of uh, acquiring six men from the Main Street Gymnasium to uh, help us with this experiment. Gentlemen, would you please come out? Thank you. <laughs> now, these men will run over to attack Mr. Salvador, and Mr. Salvador will throw them, as I said before, within a period of not over 12 seconds. Are you ready, Mr. Salvador? Go! Gentlemen, be sure and watch Ann Southern next time. <laughs> and I will be back in two weeks. And, oh, in two weeks, we're going to do our show, the one that we filmed in Rome. You'll see the whole show in Rome. Meanwhile, on behalf of my company, my staff, my sponsors, and everybody, want to wish all of you a very happy New Year. Remember, one week from tonight on this same station, be sure and watch Ann Southern in Private Secretary. If you're a filter tip smoker, you'll get more enjoyment out of filter tip Territons. Mildness makes the difference. Yes, Territon mildness makes a wonderful difference in your smoking. Pack after pack, your taste stays clean, fresh, wide awake. You get a filter that really filters. You get the flavor, the satisfaction you want. That's right. In filter tip Territons, mildness makes the difference. Try them. You'll see. The Jack Benny program has been brought to you by the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. The Jack Benny program has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas. <laughs>